emotional codependency and low self-esteem. That is something that RTS, religious trauma syndrome, can leave Jehovah's Witnesses who woke up and left the religion. And it's not an easy thing to overcome, uh, but it's possible. It's definitely possible. And we'll talk about why those things are happening and why is it so difficult for an average JW who woke up to get rid of it. Well, think about it. What is codependency? Codependency is, is happening when your emotional well-being is attached to a group or another person. You depend on somebody else's approval in order for you to feel good about yourself. You depend on their affirmations that you're doing okay. Otherwise, you will never feel like you've done enough, like you are enough. That is called dependency. And you usually have that when your source of that feeling good is only one, one group or one person. That's what called dependency is. And it's very strong among Jehovah's Witnesses because they were, they were usually involved with that one group only. Some people have a good self-esteem if they were in multiple of groups, and then if one didn't work, then at least another one would give you, right? So if you were maybe not very strong witness, but at the same time you were at school playing basketball or competing with sports or whatever, then you had other people to, to tell you how you're doing, and if they praised you for things and you achieved some sort of uh, reward for your hard work, then you could build your self-esteem. But if all what you depended on was this one group, Jehovah's Witnesses, then a lot of times people who leave that group, they really struggle. They really struggle because there's no longer a person that will come up to you and say, great job answering at the meeting, sister so-and-so. Great job for doing this talk, brother so-and-so. You don't have that. You don't have those affirmations. You don't have authority figures in your head that used to be so important to you like an elder telling you how well you're doing and now you don't have that and you're struggling and you're thinking i don't even have any skills who's gonna appreciate what i'm doing i was good at the meetings i was good at finding out the answers i was good at finding the scripture reading the scripture giving a comment i was good at that but i'm not good anywhere else because i've not done anything else and this is a real challenge for Jehovah's Witnesses because there were very few witnesses who were actually successful outside of their religion. But even if they were successful, they couldn't take any credit for it. They couldn't share their successes because they always had to downplay it, at least downplay it, if they didn't hide it all together. People would go to universities and be like, don't tell anyone. I don't want people to know, right? People would succeed in business and they're like, oh, we don't want to share it. I don't want people to think that I'm materialistic, that I'm, I'm, I'm not focused on spiritual things. They were criticized for successes and very often they would develop rapport and they would get condemnation, co compliments from people if, if they had challenges. Trauma bonding, that's what it's called. When you bring people their problems and you say look look at the problem i have and you think you have a problem i got a bigger problem and then you start blaming satan or the system of things or or whatever it is and it's never your fault and you're always hopeless and then people are like oh yeah see oh, we, we need god's kingdom it's the end of this world this wicked system of things is really bad how can you ever build any self-esteem with this kind of environment it's impossible it's extremely difficult. Those who were appointed as elders or ministerial servants, they were always chosen, not based because of their vision, not based of their leadership skills, none of that. It was always based on how good they obeyed the instructions. Always, without exception. How well is this brother receiving counsel? Right? How good is he following ex um uh, directions and how involved he is in the congregation and what people say about him. Those were the most important things when we were choosing an elder or a ministerial servant, no doubt about it. But the problem with this is you're always depending on the organization to tell you how good you're doing. 
That is very unhealthy. I tell you why being in a healthy organization versus unhealthy organization. Unhealthy organization will always say, you will always need us. You will always need Stay with us, you're safe. You go outside, mm, you will never make it outside. And pff, good luck at Armageddon, right? You're going to be destroyed. Stay with us, you're safe. You go outside, you're done. A healthy organization will train you to the point when they will say, you no longer need us. We trained you enough. Now you have enough knowledge, enough skills. Go on your own. Make it yourself. Go start your own business. You do whatever you want. You can finish a university, and the next day when you finish university, you can build another university. No problem. Everybody will cheer for you. But in an unhealthy organization, they will praise you if you follow their instructions, and they will demonize you if you follow what they're doing. You can't follow the footsteps of the organization. You have to do what they tell you, not what they do. You might think, Jack, what the heck are you talking about? I know exactly what I'm talking about. Just follow what the organization is doing, not what they're telling you to do. Just do what they do, and you will see how quickly they will get rid of you. Just go and print a book and write whatever you believe, that, that stuff that it even agrees with Jehovah's Witnesses' teachings. But publish your own book the same scriptures in it, put the same reasoning in it, just put it in your own words, publish it exactly the same like they do, go door to door, create your own territory, start doing exactly what the organization is doing, but just do it on your own, you'll see how far you'll go. This is why I'm saying this is an unhealthy organization, because they will never tell you you can do it on your own. They will always say you will depend on us. This is why a person leaving this doesn't even realize how codependent they, they've been. And when, when they get kicked out, they live on their own, they wake up, whatever it is, they don't know how to make it in their, in their life outside because they're always dependent on somebody else to tell them what to do, what not to do. And just like a child who was told by their parents what to do, what not to do, when they get out of the house, especially during the teenage years, because the parents were too strict, what do they do? They usually make a whole bunch of bad decisions. But they don't have any self-esteem. They have a high ego, just like Jehovah's Witnesses do. See, Jehovah's Witnesses is very high ego, but very low self-esteem. Remember that. Because for them, everything was the best. They had the best Bible. They had the best religion. They have the only true God. They are the only true religion, chosen one by God himself. We got the best leaders uh, in, in, in the world, right? The governing body, the only channel of communication with God. I mean, we are the best. You couldn't possibly tell them otherwise. You think Jehovah's Witnesses are humble? Not the organization. Individuals might, might be. But the organization would never, uh, never even admit to their mistakes. And if they do, they'll never apologize. That's how you know the ego is way too high. So when people leave, a lot of times... That's what happens. The ego explodes. Like Nobody's going to tell me what to do. I am now deciding all for myself. And I'm the sparse. Now I, I knew the truth before, but now I know the truth about the truth. Right? And then just pfft. anger kicks in and resentment kicks in. And they think they're, they know it all. And it's a phase. And I hope people don't stay there for very long. But after all that phase goes away and you realize, I actually got a humble myself and realize I was not in the best religion. I didn't have the best teachings. I didn't have the best knowledge. I didn't have the, the best friends. I need to do some work. I got to do a lot of homework. I got to do a lot of studying. I got to figure this stuff out for myself. I got to find out what the truth is for me. What? Where do I come from? Where am I Today, where am I going after? I got to figure those things out for myself because what I was told turned out to be not accurate. I'm going to put it gently like this. But when it comes to your self-esteem, how do you build it now? If previously was so dependent on the congregation, how do you do it without it? Well, the number one question that you got to ask yourself is this. How do you know that you have done a good job? 
So it's a really good question. How do you know what convinces you inside, when you feel inside, you've done a good job? See, the answer to that question will really help you with your self-esteem. Because you, you will see that, oh, you know what? Maybe I just depended too much on people's opinion about me. And that's why my self-esteem was always bipolar. Because if somebody gave me a pat on the shoulder, I felt great. But if they didn't, I felt like crap. I can relate to that. Because when I was a Jehovah's Witness and I gave a talk and nobody said, oh, good job, I felt crushed. I felt like I screwed up really big time. And if a lot of people gave me a pat on the shoulder, I felt, oof, I felt amazing. But without this, I felt lost because I'm like, I didn't know, you know how to evaluate my own self. So here's what you can do. Find out what convinces you inside that you're doing a good job. And after you, you literally have a formula and you know, ask yourself, is it because I gave my best or is it because I depend on other people's opinion? You got to have both. You got to have your own opinion about what you have done. And if you look at yourself and you can tell that you gave your all, you gave your best, even though somebody else is a hundred times better than you, it doesn't matter. Did you give your best? And if you gave your best, then look at yourself and like, awesome. I'm proud of it. Take credit for it. See, one of the challenges when Jehovah's Witnesses is that they, 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 they were never able to take any credit. They were never able to celebrate any of their, of their successes. Not only couldn't celebrate Christmas or, or Thanksgiving or even birthdays, but they could never celebrate their successes, even if they were successful as the Jehovah's Witness. If somebody was good at preaching and bringing people in and somebody brought, I don't know, 10 people into the organization, there was always, oh, the glory is for Jehovah. The glory is for the organization, but never for you. You, you got to stay humble. And the person could never build a self-esteem because they could never take credit for any of the strength that they had, any of the courage that they showed, any of their challenges that they overcame. None of it. So how do you build a self-esteem now? See, the truth is, you can't buy it in a store. Some people try to show off by buying expensive car, expensive purse, or whatever it is, and they think they feel good about themselves for a moment because, like, look what I've done, look what I've achieved. Truthfully, there's nothing wrong with those things as long as they're just a reminder of who you have become in order to get it. Remember this. Expensive things, nothing wrong with them, as long as they just serve you as a reminder of who you have become as a person. If you have become a better person, a stronger person, a person who contributes more, a person who makes an impact, bigger impact, who creates a better value for yourself and others, then you deserve to have expensive things and more comfortable life, better quality of life. Unfortunately, a lot of people thinking that they're going to buy those expensive things and they're going to make them feel like they're strong. No, usually it's the opposite. Usually people are very poor because they're trying to look rich. Remember that one. It will save you a lot of trouble. How do you build your confidence now? There is no magic formula except you got to overcome challenges. You got to overcome challenges. And every time you overcome challenges, celebrate, celebrate, reward yourself, share it with your friends. I tell you, you will find your friends extremely quickly if you share your successes with them. If you share your successes with your friends and they become jealous and judgmental and they feel, oh, it was easy for you to say, and bragging about it, they're not your friends. Find yourself friends who will cheer you on every time you have some sort of success instead of trying to hide it and downplay it because they're going to judge me because they're going to, I don't know what they're going to say. And I'm not just like that. Maybe you're outgrowing your friends and they're not happy for you. They're not your friends. That's how it was with Jehovah's Witnesses. I remember like it was yesterday. My brother-in-law told me the best place in the organization is right in the middle, right in the center. Don't go, don't fall behind the organization. Don't go ahead of the congregation. You have to be right in the center, right in the middle. That's the best spot. 
And when you're right in the middle, when you're this average Joe, as they say, that is where they reward you the most for being average. In the real world, you don't have much of rewards for being average. You got to create enormous amount of value and you got to focus on how to improve the quality of life for yourself and for other people. And when you do that, when you see problems out there and you overcome those problems, whether in your life or somebody else's life, then and only then you're going to build your self-esteem because you're going to feel like you just became stronger because you have overcome a challenge. You cannot build muscles by looking at weights, right? You cannot build muscles by lifting the weights once. It's something that you have to overcome as a challenge all the time. You lift your weight, and what happens? You lift it once, you lift it twice, you lift it until you can't lift it anymore. If 10 times is all what you can do, the maximum amount of growth that you're going to get is when you do the 11 and the 12. And those last two reps will give you bigger growth in your muscles than the, the, the 10 before. When we go outside of our comfort zone, that's when we build our muscle. You got to recover after, right? You go to the gym, you rip your muscles. The next day, they hurt. They hurt a lot. You can't move the next day. Then you recover, and then you do it again. See, what happened when you left Jehovah's Witnesses? Your mind expanded. You just lifted enormous amount of weight. And you need time. Everything hurts. I know. Everything hurts. Your emotions hurt. Your spirituality hurts. Your relationships hurt. Maybe your finances hurt. Every area of your life hurts. It's enormous amount of shock. Then you need time to recover. And then you need to time to build it again. And that's how you become stronger. This is why when you wake up and you go through that process, you don't want to go back. Because when you passing by a kingdom hall, you can look at the kingdom hall as, as high school. You've been in high school. You learn a whole bunch of stuff that you never used in your life. It was completely useless. And you don't have that resentment towards your high school. It's like, I wasted so many years and I did so many homeworks and I wrote so many essays and all those things just ended up in the recycling bin and it was completely pointless. None of the stuff that I I was learning, I'm using in my life. 90% of the stuff I learned is completely pointless. That's how you feel about high school? I doubt it. But a lot of people feel like that about Kingdom Hall. They pass by and they're like, <gasps> so much time wasted, so much life of my wasted. Well, nobody forced you. You went there on your own. It's time to graduate from it and move on, just like from a high school. If you want to go back to your high school and learn and read the same books, go right ahead. But I don't believe there is a need for that. It's the same thing with Jehovah's Witnesses. Once you outgrow it, there's no need for you to go back and read the same stories and listen to the same talks over and over again. It just doesn't make sense. That's what indoctrination is all about indoctrination says you will always need us education says we'll teach you until you don't need us anymore that's the difference so guys when you think about your self-esteem think about the challenges that you just overcame i guarantee you 100 percent if you use it right if you don't, don't focus on resentment all the time because it will crush you. But if you use it right, if you think about all this stuff that you have overcome and you grew stronger from it, then your emotional muscles, your spiritual muscles, your, your relationship muscles will become stronger because you've learned a lot of stuff what not to do. See, the purpose of our memory especially the painful memories that are engraved in us so strong is so we don't repeat the same mistakes again. There's a lot of people joining the religion right now as I'm speaking. And for the rest of their life, they're going to be doing what the Watchtower is telling them to do. You already have enough knowledge, skills, and experience that will protect you from making that mistake. And if you ever come across another cult, another high control group, or even a narcissistic person, you will automatically notice, oh, I see love bombing. It's a red flag, <laughs> right? 
I see their, you know, how they're treating people who left the organization. They're cutting them off. They don't want to know anything outside of their narrative. They're thinking they only have one way. They have the best leaders. They're demonizing everybody outside. You know the patterns already, and those patterns now made you stronger because you can recognize them. And that's why you become wiser because you are capable of recognizing patterns that a lot of people can't. And they're becoming victims, becoming victims of controlling people, controlling organizations or cults. You know now you became stronger because of the courage that it took to leave that organization, to question things that they, they told you not to question. Because of it, you now have the skills and knowledge and experience. Not only they will serve and protect you, but you can also help others. And the moment you do, and the moment you see as somebody who maybe is ready to kill themselves and they feel like nobody understands them, you're going to come up and you're going to say, wait, just wait. I know how you feel. I've been there. But there is so much more to life. You're just not aware of it. But please, just give me a chance to talk to you. I will definitely understand you. And you will see that all the time that you have spent as a witness, all the pain, now it's serving you because you can feel the pain of others and you know how to heal them. It's an extraordinary event and it's a gift. It's a gift if you take it as such and your self-esteem will grow every time you will help somebody else. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.